Welcome back to the Super Sim series, where Tina is thriving and her mum Sally is barely surviving. I wouldn't have it any other way. Having just earned the top-notch toddler trait and aged up with a small boost to her child's skills, Tina was ready, but the task in front of her was huge. In her 14 days as a child, she'd need to complete all eight child aspirations, receive an A grade at school, and additionally max her child's skills and make progress towards her character values. Yes, we're in for a ride. And while the increased skill gain from the top notch toddler trait would help, I would need much more help. I started with a quick win, being lot traits. Penny Pixies had been average at best in earning me money, and so I was more than happy to part ways. In its place, I added in both child's play and the study spot lot trait, both of which would help to increase skill gain, and the latter of which would also help Tina in completing her homework faster. The final lot trait that I added was good schools, which would make achieving a higher grade a little bit easier. I then decided that with 14 days in this life stage, I'd give Tina a cast makeover with new outfits, which mysteriously happened instantly while Tina was smashing out her homework. Yes, the magic of storytelling. Most of her outfits are pretty tame, though I decided that being a werewolf, she needed something a little out of the box, like a princess outfit with giant dinosaur shoes. I then sold whale and the potty for 460 simoleons, bringing the household funds to just above 600. And it was then time for Tina to embrace science. I had her experiment on the science table until she reached level 4 of the mental skill, which is the level required for a child sim to be able to plant plants. As we're heading into winter, my main money makeup being the bees were about to go dormant. So I purchased 4 planters, as well as some starter flowers, herbs and vegetable seed packets before opening them and then planting a begonia, a chrysanthemum, a carrot and a sage, and then using Tina's gift of Sulani power to increase the quality of the begonia flower. A side note is that as part of this series, I'm putting in a limit of planting just one of each type of plant that Tina can then grow and use to make money, which is my small attempt to make gardening less of an insanely easy way to achieve riches. It was at this moment that I sold Tina's toddler bed and instead purchased a relatively bad quality normal bed. And it was this bed that would give Sally's life purpose once again. Currently, Sally had level 4 handiness, but I needed her to get this to level 6 so that she'd be able to install the massage controls upgrade and make Tina's bed recover her energy much, much faster. And while Sally got to work training the skill by upgrading the bathroom sink, Tina began crafting a friendship bracelet that she need in order to complete her slumber party animal aspiration. Now it was getting late, but there was still one more thing that Tina needed to do, and that's create a club with herself at the top. Welcome to Work Work That Homework, where we're just three works away from the chorus of Rihanna's hit song, Work. If you're wondering why, it's because of club name character limits. Club activities include working on homework and being funny. And the biggest benefit of having this club is in it allowing Tina to summon children over at all hours of the day. Like right now. Tina began a nighttime gathering by using her gift of Tulani trait to summon a volcanic bomb, both to impress her friends and to assert her dominance and leadership over the club members. She did this while smelling bad as a power play, before then having a quick bath because no one likes being stinky. Also awkwardly, this left her mum to entertain the crowd. It was an oversight, with Sally quickly retreating to the treehouse to watch nature. She was like, get me out of here. Tina then began making friends with the club members. And yes, next to the bin is clearly where the cool kids congregate. Let's not question it. During the gathering, Tina also found out her first like comedy. And I decided that going forward in this let's play, whenever Tina discovers either a like or a dislike, I will always be saying yes and adopting it. After ending the gathering, Tina used her club points to purchase the Social Boost Club perk, which would allow for faster social skill training during a club gathering. The rest of the night involved Sally crafting a friendship bracelet of her own, as well as generally fixing the absolute state of both Tina and Sally's needs. Then the following morning, I put into action my plan to fully complete the Slumber Party Animal Aspiration which started with Sally spending 240 of the 242 simoleons that she had to start a slumber party event. 
And yes, the slumber party event had a 7.15am start. Let's again not question it. The children arrived and got to work socialising, with Tina also exchanging a friendship bracelet with her mum to help the aspiration along. Sally was an easy win here because she's a little bit desperate for friends. I feel like I am so mean to Sally in this playthrough that I almost feel bad about it. Almost. Tina told lots of stories using the sleeping bag, before then pulling all the stops to ensure that the event ended up with a gold rating. Some kids did decide to sleep next to the road, which was a choice, but overall I was okay with this, as long as I got that gold rated event. Also a shout out to Myra, who was forced to listen to Tina constantly ramble about everything in order to reach level 6 of the social skill. A gold medal event saw Tina gain two cute sleeping bags that she wasn't going to use, and also come completed the slumber party aspiration, earning Tina the practiced host trait which makes her friendly and funny socials always successful during parties. It was then time for Tina's second aspiration, being creative genius. After playing pretend in the treehouse and finishing the first part of the aspiration, Tina hit a roadblock being that she needed to stargaze. And with two simoleons to the household name, she couldn't afford a 750 simoleon telescope. Tina summoned another volcanic bomb before using her gift of Sulani once again on her begonia plant. And she then opened up both the rock from earlier and the new rock once it cooled. Selling everything here propelled Tina to 267 simoleons. After which I decided that she needed to sleep and fix up her needs overnight, while Sally made more progress on leveling up her handiness skill, reaching level 5 while upgrading the toilet. Also side note, Tina started getting a wobbly tooth that night as well while Sally became sick, and weirdly Tina got stuck in this loop of just being unable to sleep both in her bed and the treehouse. So it got to morning with school around the corner and she was about to pass out, but we had to press on, and Tina went to school in an absolutely foul mood. While Tina was away, I sent Sally off to Anchor Point Library where she played Blick Block and used up 200 simoleons that Tina earned on upgrade parts. After returning home, she then got to work upgrading, but sadly she was still short of getting level 6 handiness. Tina then returned home after the roughest first day of school that any kid could have before quickly taking a bath and going straight to bed, and I was low-key relieved that she was actually sleeping now. Well, at least for a while, because the monster under the bed made an appearance, giving her the fear of darkness in the process. I was like, Tina, you are a small werewolf that summons volcanic bombs. You are not scared of this octopus monster thing. Annoyingly, all my talking with the monster was unsuccessful, and so I had to get Sally to spray the monster, which she thankfully did before then farting and leaving the room. It was a bit rude. At this point, I was already considering purchasing the Kulala Defender Light in order to keep the monster away, but for now, things seem to be under under control. Overnight, Tina increased the quality of her begonias again and then summoned another lava bomb. She also pulled out her loose tooth before placing it under her bed and going back to sleep. She then woke to a small tooth fairy cash injection, some very cute tooth posters, and an aggressive mother who kickstarted a difficult family dynamic before then becoming one with the bed for a moment. It comes as no surprise that it was in this moment that Sally also discovered that she was erratic. Now while Tina's plants were growing, she couldn't actually harvest them until she reached level 6 of the mental skill. I know, I too am shocked by the mental power that it takes to pick a flower, but sadly there wasn't much time to work on this as after smashing out her homework at the last minute, Tina was off to school. It was while Tina was at school that I decided that times were getting desperate and I really needed that telescope. And so I sold Sally's bed and an additional kitchen counter. In more positive news, Sally also used the day to finally reach level 6 handiness. She had to take a trip to the library to purchase more upgrade parts, but believe me when I tell you that I was incredibly relieved when she finally upgraded Tina's bed with massage controls, as this would make caring for Tina heaps easier despite the family being incredibly broke. When Tina returned home, she opened up another volcanic rock from the previous day and then went fishing. I thought that if she caught some fish, she would make a few simoleons towards getting her telescope, while also training up her mental skill a little too. Even after fishing and selling Sally's furniture, I was still 50 simoleons short on the telescope. But thankfully, I then realized that I could sell Sally's hand in a skill book that she no longer needed, which got me just enough funds to buy the telescope. I popped it into the treehouse and immediately had Tina use it. And after some successful stargazing, the only thing left for her creative genius aspiration was to sleep in the treehouse for six hours. And Tina, 
Well, she was exhausted, which should have made this a breeze. Annoyingly though, Tina would just not sleep in the treehouse, waking up every couple of minutes. I thought maybe it was her fear of the dark, and so I bought a Fear Be Gone potion and used it to get rid of the fear. And after sleeping inside until her fear of the darkness moodlet disappeared, I then tried again. This time I had more success. The silver lining of all of this is that today was also Winterfest, meaning no school, and so I could have Tina sleep in. And Winterfest was really awesome news, because checking the mailbox for gifts saw Sally get a painting that she could then sell and then use the money to pay the bills. During Winterfest I had Tina spend an excessively long time sleeping in the treehouse, literally at every chance I could get, and I would love to say that this led to the completion of the creative genius aspiration, but sadly despite definitely having slept in there for more than 6 hours this was not ticking off. I was sure that I'd done this successfully before though, and so I felt that maybe it had to be done all in one go. Further gifts were asked for that night when Father Winter arrived, and note that while Father Winter is technically Tina's father, because I moved Tina to a new save for the series, this Father Winter is technically not the father. Anywho, Sally was furious when she got a random element, and Tina was content with getting a My Sim trophy. Overall though, Sally decided that Father Winter's efforts weren't good enough, and so she fought him for more presents. To be fair, like, an element... Really? What is Sally gonna do with a Cydralin? Probs try to eat it, you know? Sadly though, Sally lost the fight, and I also discovered that she now dislikes idealist sims. To help make the holiday successful for Tina, I then bought a pile of presents and had her take one from it. She got toddler box, which I then sold. Tina spent the night moon gazing, reaching level 6 of the mental skill and gaining the ability to finally harvest her plants, which she then did and sold. And then in the morning she re-harvested and sold them again to bring the household funds up to around 850 simoleons. Tina then breezed through her homework before heading off to school. And while Tina was away, I then had Sally do what she does best. Purchase upgrade parts at the library and then upgrade furniture around the house. And this led to a pretty much completely upgraded bathroom before Sally got a message saying that Tina spent recess running around trying to kiss some of the other students. Sally knew that this was untrue, as Tina does not chase to kiss, she is only chased because her super sim aura attracts the masses, and hence Sally brushed this off by saying it was just kids being kids. After returning home and completing her homework, Tina's energy need was quite low, and hence it was time to try and finally finish off her creative genius aspiration by sleeping in her treehouse, and to my relief this aspiration task eventually ticked off. In the process, seeing Tina complete her second aspiration and gain the idea person trait. This trait allows her to paint, write, program, and write songs almost twice as fast as she would otherwise, and it will also see her overcome writer's block easier. It was now time to take on the Playtime Captain aspiration. But first, a 2,500 satisfaction point spending spree. This saw Tina pick up Observant, which allows her to learn a sim's traits when meeting them, as well as Morning Sim, which gives her a happy moodlet and lets her build skills faster in the morning, and Night Owl, which does the the same but at night. And yes, I know it's a bit weird being both, but we'll run with it. Now I was behind schedule with my aspirations and had no time to waste, so in the middle of the night Tina took a bubble bath to become playful before playfully stomping at the nearby water park. She then called on her club leader status to host a mandatory gathering at 5am on a Friday morning, helping her to quickly lock in the three friends that she needed for the second part of the aspiration. After a long day of school while Sally upgraded the treehouse, Tina returned home and started bike riding, getting rather close to completing the aspiration. Kind of frustratingly, when she tried to sleep, the monster under the bed re-emerged, but this time Tina managed to make the monster her friend. And after more nighttime bike rides, both on grass and through the side of her house, Tina finally reached level 6 of the motor skill and locked off her third aspiration, earning the pack animal trait, which lets Tina have faster relationship and skill gain when training with friends. It was then time to to bring on the mind and body aspiration. For this I started by purchasing a mirror and then having Tina psych herself up to become confident. Afterwards she got back on her bike, 
this time with Sally helping to teach her. This led to Tina riding inside the house with Sally glitching out and enthusiastically cheering. Tina even rode through sinks, walls, doors, you name it, but it didn't matter. All that mattered was that Tina learnt to ride that bicycle. Sadly, she didn't finish learning to ride it, but she did enter a mean streak phase, twice apparently. Needless to say, I got Tina back on the bike, and while it pretty much took the entire Saturday, eventually Tina did learn to ride it. This left just one more task for the aspiration, being to go 12 hours without a negative need moodlet. And right now, Tina's bladder, hunger, and energy were all very low. I quickly had her go to the bathroom before then heading to bed for a nap. But it was also New Year's Eve, and I didn't want Tina to miss out on the shushubi magic. So while Tina slept, Sally prepared some dishes. And I then had the pair head out to the Moonlight Cinema before Tina started up a club gathering. Yes, the social pool Tina has being a club leader is incredible. They had an awesome spread of food, a big screen, and an all-around very cute setting to bring in The Sims New Year. And you better believe that they should shooby their way into it. The night even saw Tina max her social skill, make a resolution to complete an aspiration milestone, and grow a little bit closer to hybrid alien Mars. The only downside was that Tina did get a negative energy moodlet which reset her 12-hour aspiration goal timer. After heading home, Tina fixed her needs before going straight to sleep, with the main goal now being to avoid all negative need moodlets for a full 12 hours. The following morning, with spring having sprung, the bees were back in full force, and Sally was quick to tend to them, trying to make them like her without being stung. Meanwhile, Tina took up the violin as her instrument of choice. I could tell from the soothing tunes that she was going to be a star. That day, the flea market was on, and so after selling some produce and honey, I sent Tina and Sally on over. Tina ended up purchasing a desk lamp, as well as an amethyst from a crystal seller, but sadly, it was a relatively uneventful event overall. Besides the fact that upon returning home, Tina completed the mind and body aspiration, and was then awarded with the headstrong trait, which will make her confident and focused moodlets last about 50% longer. It was now time for the base game aspirations, starting with Artistic Prodigy, and I completely smashed this one out. I used satisfaction points to purchase and drink an inspired potion before then drawing using the activity table. I then simply had Tina play with three different toys that she owned, and finally I had her revisit her newfound passion for the violin for a solid five hours before drawing the five different types of pictures on an activity table. I may have ignored her needs a little too much as she did pass out during this time, but you know, only once. Once this was all done, her creativity skill had gone from level 7 to being completely maxed, and Tina had knocked out her fifth aspiration, earning the creatively gifted trait that will see Tina earn adult creative skills faster. By the time she finished, it was 10am on Monday morning. Tina was very tired and she was also almost 3 hours late for school. Thankfully, with all her child skills over level 7, Tina could now dominate her homework and complete it in around 15 game minutes, which she did before passing out again and then running off to school while Sally continued upgrading things around the house. I felt kind of bad and probably overdid it in trying to knock out that aspiration so quickly, and so when Tina returned home, I lined up her next aspiration to complete, being rambunctious scamp. Okay, but in better news, I did let Tina sleep while her mum threw a fit, and after Tina was well cared for, it was then time to get back on track with a quick trip to the park. She was thankfully already in a very playful mood, which meant that all it took was a bit of time on the jungle gym to finish the first part of this aspiration. Tina Tina then went to the library which was oddly open at 2am and spent 4 hours practicing typing. If ever you needed proof that Tina is not just a regular sim, but a super sim, then I felt that this was it. And after completing the second phase of the aspiration, Tina switched to playing keyboard commander in pursuit of a high score, snagging it 20 minutes before the school day started. Tina then dominated her homework before heading off to school, and while away, Sally sold some honey from the bees that she then used to pay the bills. When Tina returned home, I had to double take because she was now an A student, and her responsibility character value was also fully maxed thanks to a mix of completing her homework and her getting good school grades. But my focus quickly returned to aspirations, and after a quick nap, Tina invited Mars along on a trip to Willow Creek Park. 
here it only took a little while for Tina to make it across the monkey bars three times and thus complete the rambunctious scamp aspiration, earning the physically gifted trait in the process, which helped Sims to build adult physical skills faster. It was now time to take on the whiz kid aspiration, and she smashed out the first part of it by playing some back-to-back -back games of chess with Mars, which conveniently also saw Tina max out her mental skill. Tina returned home hungry and needing to use the bathroom, and after a quick needs fix, I then had Sally read to Tina for a few hours to complete the first aspiration stage. I don't know why Sally made this an outdoor moment at 1am, and so after the first book, I moved them into a more appropriate setting. Sally also kept glitching into the bed, which I'm just going to say was part of her storytelling. Afterwards, I bought a focus potion and had Tina chug it before dominating her homework, and it was at this stage that I realised that with over 4,000 satisfaction points it was time to purchase the seventh reward trait to boost skill gain across the board. Also yes, she walked all the way to the treehouse to complete her homework. After selling some flowers and managing a quick nap, Tina was then off to school, and while away, Sally managed to reach level 8 handiness, which then allowed her to upgrade Tina's bed to further improve it and ideally lead to some happy moodlets upon waking. It was while Sally was upgrading the bed that Tina returned home from school exhausted, and she went straight to taking a nap. Upon waking, Tina bought and drank another focus potion before dominating her homework once again to complete the second aspiration milestone. As Tina was was already an A student, all that was left to do now to complete the aspiration was to use the science table to craft three emotional potions, which was very quickly completed, seeing Tina finish off her seventh aspiration and gain the mentally gifted trait, which would also see her learn adult mental skills faster. Tina had three days to go before she'd age up and just one aspiration left to complete, being social butterfly. I finally felt somewhat on top of things in my race against time, so after fixing Fixing Tina's knees, tending to her plants, and summoning a volcanic bomb because I felt like it, I then purchased the Doctor playset and had Tina play Doctor in order to improve her empathy character value. When morning came and Tina headed off for school, I put my plan into motion. For Tina's final aspiration, she needed to meet five new sims and make a friend. And so while at school, I changed from a normal schooling approach to instead have Tina make friends. And this led to her actually making a friend, as well as her meeting three new sims throughout her school day. Upon returning home, Tina headed off to the Moonlight Cinema with Mars. Here she quickly met two new sims before spending the rest of the day hanging out with Mars, with the duo really hitting it off with their adorable back-to-back -back hugs, so much so that they became BFFs. And all of this meant that Tina completed the first two stages of the social butterfly aspiration. But the last one wasn't so easy. Tina needed to make three friends with other children, and also become friends with two adults. I know, what about all of her existing friends? Well, at first they didn't appear to count. This was when Tina's ruthless side came out. And yes, I made her summon a volcanic bomb here just for dramatic effect. At 9pm on Thursday, Tina held an emergency club gathering before kicking Elsa, Jaden and Myra, all of whom she was already friends with, out of the club. Or at least that's what I had planned to do. But randomly after I kicked out Myra, the aspirations seemed to naturally tick off that she'd become friends with three child sims. And so Jaden was spared, and instead I only kicked out Elsa, mainly because I couldn't cancel the interaction fast enough. Sorry Elsa. All that was left to do was become friends with two adults. Tina ended the club gathering and then made her way over to the Goths house in Willow Creek. She knocked on the door at 11.30pm before then charming both Bella and Mortimer with the charisma skill levels that she had under her belt. Side note, Tina also smashed Mortimer in a game of chess to subtly assert her dominance. And when Bella tried to sleep at 3am, Tina was there to wake her up and remind her that she should be her friend. Eventually, Bella and Tina did become friends, probably because Bella really wanted to sleep. It was then that I purchased the always welcome satisfaction point reward, which effectively allowed Tina to unofficially move into the goth family house and also take a quick nap and use their bathroom to have a bath before she continued to work on becoming friends with Mortimer. Sadly though, she wasn't able to win over Mortimer's friend before the next school day began. While Tina was at school, Sally tended to her bees and sold the honey they produced for a decent payout, and
And this, along with Tina's gardening, had brought their household funds up to around 800 simoleons. Tina returned home from school exhausted and went straight to bed, before then waking up to invite over none other than Mortimer Goth, pretending to be interested in adult things to win over his friendship, which eventually she did manage to do. And this final friend saw Tina finish off the social butterfly aspiration and earn the socially gifted trait, which will see Tina learn adult social skills faster. It came just in time too, with Tina having only a single day left until she aged up. Her time as a child had seen her complete all eight child aspirations and thus gain eight reward traits, and she'd used the satisfaction points gained from these to purchase an additional five, so she'd currently gained 13 new traits in total. Skill-wise, Tina had maxed all of her child skills, while also reaching level 5 logic, level 4 charisma, level 3 violin, and level 1 in both video gaming and fishing. And then when it came to character values, she had maxed out her responsibility while also making a decent amount of progress with her manners, emotional control, empathy, and conflict resolution. Sadly, Tina hadn't yet excelled as a scout or in drama club, and she also hadn't been able to spend time exploring some cool child activities like playing with marbles or void critters, simply because her schedule had been so packed and so focused on completing leading aspirations. Hence, I decided that going forward as a teenager, I was going to slow things down a little and start letting Tina use potions of youth if needed to reset her age. But with the child stage effectively completed, there was only one thing left to do, and that was to throw a raging birthday party. Well, as much as one could with 800 simoleons. Sally spent the night cooking up a spread while Tina slept, and I then fixed up the house with a couple of cute decorations. And when Saturday morning came, the party began with Mars arriving, having aged up to a teenager with an outfit that was giving Seth Cohen from the OC, which I loved. During the party, Tina found out that she liked stories, and upon aging up, she earned the high self-esteem trait thanks to having high confidence as a child. When it came to randomizing her new trait, she got lactose intolerant, and I simply had to refuse and re-roll. There was just no way I was having my super sim waste a trait slot on being traumatized by dairy. On the re-roll, I got paranoid, which I I could live with. It would make things a lot more interesting than being lactose intolerant, that was for sure. Then I chose a knowledge aspiration simply for the accompanying bonus trait of being a quick learner and getting a skill boost to skill leveling, but know that this aspiration will be changing shortly. Overall, Tina now had three more traits, for a total of 16 in just this episode alone. It was sadly only a bronze medal birthday party, but I didn't mind, because Tina was finally a teenager, and her next phase of being a super for Sim was about to get a whole lot more interesting. Just before we finish, know that a new group of teenagers has moved into Copperdale, including the socially awkward knitting legend Elliot, alternative dance machine Kiera, trendy style icon Samira, and finally football superstar Skylar. So keep an eye out for them in future episodes. Additionally, a party island has popped up in Sulani, which is the new hotspot for teenagers to escape to on a night out. Stay tuned, because next episode Tina will be juggling life as a teenager, involving high school, after school activities, part time jobs, relationships, and hiding her newly awakened werewolf side. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day. See you later!